Hallelujah. Our Father, we thank you for tonight. Just, just very few time that is remaining. We ask for mercy as we have cried to you. We ask for help, aid. Help us, Lord. Help us to learn of you. You are meek and lowly. Help us to learn of you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We can have our seat. Thank you, my dear. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, how many of you are blessed so far? I was blessed by that song. Amen. We give glory to God. Our Father, we thank you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for reserved things that humans, flesh, is not allowed to see things concerning you. You are hidden. The revealer, the hidden revealer of the hidden God. You are awesome. It's mercy to know you. It is, we are fortunate, as you will always use that word, you use this word, blessed are your eyes. Indeed, we are blessed. Jesus, help our heart to count your gold, to discern your glories, to see things you exalt at our hearts. Help me. I'm praying before you. I bow to you that you will quicken me highly tonight according to your order. Quicken all of us. Raise us from the dead. I am told that you are the one who quickened the dead. Quicken us. Thank you, Father. Help us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Let's see verse 1. Mark chapter 16. When does... Mark chapter 16, when the Sabbath was passed, when Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, Salome, had brought sweet spices that they may, might come and anoint him. I love this. I just want to stay here. Now, <clears throat> it means when that tells us it's not the first day, not so. It's not the same time and it's not the same day. Hallelujah. That they might come. Of course, if they will take, they will make their approach to the tomb of Jesus because thank God for the preparation of a tomb for our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God because um, 
they never dug a tomb for Jesus. It was not Jesus' tomb. That was, it was someone else's tomb. The man had already prepared his own tomb before his death. Joseph of Arimathea. Hallelujah. I don't know the duration of time they do that. Hallelujah. Customary to the Jewish custom. You don't, they don't dig downward. They dig inward. Into caves. Are you getting me? Into hard, hard rock. Hard. Are you getting me? Hard ground. They, they will make their hole and make a home there for to hide the dead. Um, because when Joseph had taken the body of, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. Praise God. But that's clear, it's not the same day. Not so. He rolled. So, how will the women put away the stone? Because no man was with them to help them. Of course, shout hallelujah. It must have been a heavy stone, not so. Shout hallelujah. It will take a lot of men to do that, to move that stone out of the grave. And of course, no man was willing to follow them. Give me that place back. Amen, no man. Hallelujah. He rolled. And when, let's see, Give me Mark, that same place the women went to. They had their mind to decide to anoint the body of our Lord. Is it and that they might anoint him? Hallelujah. Let's see the next verse. Very early in the morning, the of the in the very early in the very early in the morning, the first day of the week. So it's clear they came to the grave. I'm sure. And they knew, the women believe that Jesus will rise from the dead. They believe. But the apostles did not believe. Are we ready? So I'm wondering, why would the women believe? Where did they get faith from? It's very simple. Shout hallelujah. Um, a man will easily give up his dead, but a woman will not. Did you get me? You, you get me? A man will give up his dead. You can't. Now, the passion of the disciples had been broken concerning that body. Jesus of Jesus. What they saw was enough. But women, amen. You see, we think women are more afraid than a man. You can scare a woman, but the woman will go back there. So, because something kept taking them back to that place. They just wanted the body of Jesus. Have you ever seen a man, maybe his little baby is about to be assaulted. The woman will die there. Is it today all of you will kill me together with this child? Or maybe a dead body is there. The woman will say, today I will not live here until this baby. I better die here. I want to go with my child. There is a bond between the woman and their and their loved ones or their offspring hallelujah or their husband. Now, what is the key? These women, the strength of these women is not faith. 
is passion, is love. They were in love with Jesus. They love the Lord so deeply that they were not afraid of the Roman soldiers. They love the Lord and they, they love him and they don't want him to die. They love him and they love him and love him to come back again alive. So you can see why they kept visiting the grave. The apostles didn't go to the grave. They have given up concerning that dead of Jesus. But these women went. You can, can you, if you cast your mind back to, those, to that century, I want you to just imagine what these ladies must have been discussing among themselves. I'm sure. You, you, do, I wonder, do they know anything about the gospel Jesus preached? And about the things Jesus says concerning his death and resurrection. How many of you know? They knew. They knew all the doctrine of Jesus. So they must have been talking to themselves. Shout hallelujah. They must have recalled Lazarus' death. And how Lazarus came back to life. I hope I'm talking to you. So they, they have, they had the mercy of God that made them still hold on. All they were doing was that they were waiting for Jesus to rise again. And they timed the exact date that he would be risen from the dead. They didn't go the second day. They went on the day of resurrection. And they also, they didn't go at the wrong timing they went at early hour. It's the Bible. They said they went very early in the morning. In another place, they said the time they went, the sun has not really, there was no light. So they went very early in the morning on Sunday, the first day of the week. They, they never went on Saturday. They went on Sunday. So, the one thing that actually, everyone say amen, amen, that I felt, this is the drama. So, why would they hold spices of oil? Oil of spices. This, that in itself is an anointing. Why would they hold it? I presume they... They are a warrior. Everybody say it again. Too. They were a warrior against corruption. They wanted to go and if Jesus had not yet risen, look at me, they would preserve that body for the spirit to come into the body. You see, that's what they were fighting for. So that's why they carried, they were so drunk. Hallelujah that they move early in the morning to wage war against the forces of corruption that fight the body. So that before Jesus' body, amen, before uh, Jesus' body will come, will begin to fall into corruption, his spirit will have entered that body because they know Jesus says he's going to rise on the third day. I presume this was what on their heart. In case they found the body laying down there, they will anoint the body. We give praise to God. Isn't that awesome? Can we shout hallelujah? I'm not hearing you say hey, amen. Are you blessed by what I'm saying? Is there anybody who understood what I said? Is there anybody who have a doubt in his heart? Who have doubt concerning what I've just said. Now, they bought, they had bought, where did they get sweet spices from? And when did they buy it? I discovered no man 
no man anointed Jesus' body. The issue of anointing his body were women. Holy Ghost was using women. Those who decide to undertake the issue of the pour of oil on Jesus, are you getting it? It has to do with the feminine being. Jesus moved the feminine to go and do that. The issue of the oil of alabaster. You remember? It was a woman, not a man. In fact, uh, when a woman poured it, a man said, are you listening to me? Hallelujah. There's another my woman who also anointed Jesus' feet with her tears. And not only did that, she kissed it. Now, I wanted to see the... I'm seeing the use of a woman. Who they are, really. It can only take Christ. It's only Christ that I've seen who came to, who revealed the womanhood. What she ought to do. Now, no one, no one expressed deep devotion to Jesus more than the women. The apostles were following him. Right. After some time, they complained, we have followed you. What is our gain? But these women, amen. And they were not numbered among the twelve. It was God's design to build a man around the very close disciples of Jesus. These women... We are not numbered among the twelve, but they were Jesus' disciple. I hope I'm communicating. And they followed him from Galilee. It means they followed him for three years nonstop. Give me their name again. Give me their names. Salome. Now, Mary, the mother of James, I, I, I am too sure that James is the senior brother of John. They are referring to because her firstborn is James. If she wasn't, how would she be so close to go and ask Jesus? Listen to me. Concerning who, who will sit on the right and who will sit on the left. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I'm not hearing you because I, I don't think Jesus was in Galilee when he said that. It means she followed her children. She was following them everywhere they went. She would have wished she was a man. You get what I'm trying to say? She would have what, my brother? I am I'm not too sure. Listen to me. Everybody say amen. I am not too sure that James was the one who discovered John. I will still need to discover the Bible. Maybe I need to go and read very well. It's possible that it was their mother that told James, go and look for Jesus. What are you doing at home? Recently, a, man, a woman called us in the office and talked to Pastor Moses and said, God has spoken to his son, her own son, that she should be part and parcel of this ministry and that she will want to release the boy to come and stay in one of the minister's house. That the boy has a calling. 
she has been listening to the message. And for her, she, she felt her son should not come short of what is happening. Don't just join church. Let him live in the pastor's house. Amen. Because she wants that boy to also pack something with his head. No, just to tell you, the women with different passion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, there are girls, not so, other ladies were in the palaces. One was plotting for the head of John the Baptist. And the other one was, what's that? Moving their children to serve God. What are you looking for? Amen. Amen. We give praise to God. There is something about spices and women. How many of you agree with me? <laughs> yes. Perfume. Women dance around perfume. It's not evil. They like fragrance. Amen. Amen. If you want your wife to look at you, miss dangerous fragrance. <laughs> Mix it in such a way that she won't watch that. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know there are some perfume that, that goes with you to bed. They smell even on your chest. Amen. If, if you want her to lie there, just allow the drift to home. Let your body marry your clothes. In the night, you talk, what is smelling here? Ah, uh, don't even talk to her. You don't need to talk. Just yeah. This, the, the, yes, the smell is talking. Shout hallelujah. Women like nice things. Shout hallelujah. God made sure the functionality of Eden was in the top form before they brought her. Before they watched her. How many of you knew that uh, they form Eden, they grew Eden, they form Adam, then after they form Adam, then they now form animals from the dust to the ground. God formed them and brought them to Adam. I'm not, that, I'm not talking about creation in Genesis. I'm talking about God forming them from where? So it's clear, Pastor, that they were created before man, but they came after man in formation. And God brought them to Adam. So that if God formed them before Adam, are you listening to me? It's not going to be in order because Adam has to name them. They didn't just form them. They formed them and then brought them. So Adam named them because Adam has to name, understand. Adam came, saw the earth, saw the earth topology, read the geography because the animals came from geography. And she has to give names to them according to the laws of their formation. Is that clear? Everybody say amen. amen. Shout hallelujah. I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. So you can so the woman came later. When the animals have been named, then God formed the woman and brought her to the man. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, it's good for a woman to suffer with you. <laughs> hallelujah is good. When you have a woman who can love, who love you, and who can, she can suffer with you. But it's also nice for a woman to also be glorified together. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. For if we, we are women, if we suffer with Jesus, we shall also watch that. I'm not hearing you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So suffering, suffering. What I'm saying is that 
even in the natural, God will give you people a very good landing. What? Eh? Landing pad. Shout hallelujah. I know your wife does not love natural things, but it's good for her to smell some good things. It's not good for them to be living in caves with you for too long. Take her somewhere. Are you listening to me? Take her somewhere. Let there be a different fragrance. You boys think. Think. Some of you are saving money too much. Take her out. Shout hallelujah. Make her think, boys. Hallelujah. Think it out. Amen. Amen. You will discover the woman that you marry. May God give us wisdom. Amen. God will bless us with wisdom. Amen. And see how he made them. Shout hallelujah. At times, don't just say because your wife is living by you with you by faith. Give her money. Give, not the one she used in cooking. Give her money. Sweetheart, I am dashing you this money. <laughs> Pastor Thompson, give her what, sir? Don't just say, sweetheart, this money is for the, for the home. Mm -mm. Separate it. Give, this is for you. Praise the Lord. I say God will give wisdom. Bless her. So, sister, I just feel good. I want to give you this one. Take, this is yours. Eat it. Use it to buy anything. Those women have suffered with us. May God give us wisdom to treat them good. Any man who raises up his hand and beat his wife, he's beating himself. It's not wise. Love your own wife. Love your wife as your own body. Kai. Deep. Deep. May God fill us with strength to love our wives the way God wants us to love them. As your own body. I give glory to God. Uh, they are bought sweet spices. There are spices that are sweet. Pastor, do you eat them? No. We have sweet clamors. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Just give me some time. Amen. Amen. There is a sweet cinnamon. There is also sweet calamos. Those are two spices that I know that they are sweet. Give me that place you opened right now. The, the one before this one. You, Thank you. You are very smart. And they made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices according to the work of the apothecary. Apothecary um, perfumers, those who make perfumes. Apothecary. Amen. Hallelujah. They are the one who make perfumes. 
I've forgotten it. Maybe I've seen it before. Uh, maybe I've seen it before. Some in Italy, I think so. Jesus will rise again. The Lord God must have put it in their heart to do that. And it's also a sign for them to buy bare spices that they believe in the Holy Scripture. You cannot separate a woman. There's also a relationship between a woman and spices. Songs of Solomon said, your name is as ointment powerful. That ointment is anointing. Give it to me. Sons of Solomon chapter 1. Because of the savour of thy good ointment. So ointment, like I say, is anointing. So anointing, the word oint, anointing is to act to pronounce the anointing. An ointment. It's an ointment. A-N. Ointment. Anointing. is an ointment. An ointment. A short form of anointment is anointing. Thy name is as ointment pour forth. Thy name is as ointment pour forth. Therefore, do the virgins love thee. <laughs> Therefore, do the virgins love thee. So, virgins are women. So, that is why when a man is anointed, women will gather around him. Anointing pulls women, even naturally. Our father did it so. Anointing does not attract a man, first of all. A man is looking at him, is he a deceiver or who is he? <laughs> who is this guy? Is he real? I don't know what my wife sees in him. Hello. Don't, when you see a man greeting hello, he's sizing you up. So when you see him, greet him well. A lot of men, when they come to you, when their wife is, God pulled their wife around you, is to pull him. He's not the man. He's not just the woman. God gets the women. God gets the man through the, their wives. Immediately a woman is interested in a gospel or a ministry or a minister, before you know it, after a long, the man will talk and talk and talk, but the woman can weaken the man over time and bring him over. So, don't just believe that the man has agreed immediately. His clap is not going to be sharp. Don't be hungry. It's gradual. It's not easy to touch the femininity of a man because he is also a virgin. But you see, the clothing of our sisters, their outward dressing is weak. So anointing can penetrate easily. When you see a woman who anointing does not attract. There is something wrong with a woman. That woman has another husband. Every woman should like anointing. There are other things that can steal a woman's heart from anointing. Fame. Power, governorship position. But you know, anointing can be so strong that the wife of a governor will like the anointed. 
Because the heart of a woman is mysterious. Women's need are beyond the natural. When women find all the money, they will discover that's not all that they need. A woman wants somebody who can go into an impossible realm to bring a solution. So when you can, you can cross the boundary of human strength and bring the things from the unknown, it takes power and anointing to do that. That's why you can see uh, evil prophet with dangerous anointing also attract some kind of women until God delivers them. Am I communicating to you? Until God helps them. Women naturally tilt towards the spirit. It's good. It's very, very good. It's very, 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 very good. There were many women, pastor, in Israel. Few followed Jesus. Few followed Jesus. Few were passionate in close, neat fellowship. These people were women, the mother of James. Not so. Jesus was about 33 years old. 30 to 33 years old. Of course, Mary would be in her 50s. Mother of James would be in her 50s. Or late 40s. Because John was young. According to history, we were told that Jesus was actually the oldest among his disciples. I used to think Peter was older than him. It was not so. They were all young. 20s. Peter was close and Andrew to Jesus' age. They were very young. So that picture of Peter, where do we get it from? I'm sure many of us thought Peter was actually 42 years old. No, no. No, no, no. No, no. Can I ask you? Can I prove it to you? Can I prove it to you? Age group in Israel matters. The Israel observe age like the our brethren, like the, our people in Nigeria, the Igbos, we have age class, age grade. They even celebrate it. So they don't, if you are not of the same age, you don't pull together. Uh, do you know it was Andrew and James, you know the Zebedees, they, it was Andrew who invited Andrew, the brother of Peter, met John before Peter. Andrew and James, I think they were friends. So if you are not age, age gray, they shouldn't be friends. Now, if Jesus were to marry, he would have married around 25, 26. At 60, a Jew should be resting. A Jewish man should be resting. His own son should take over the household estate. He should take, take over the estate of the family. At CC, the rest, don't do all those things. So that tells you that all of them were of the same. Jesus was, the, was actually the oldest and the eldest among, among his, he was older than his disciples. <laughs> few women like I said follow Jesus I hope my statement teaching is not boring today okay thank you thank you sir <laughs> so Jesus this is the gospel not so I'm teaching the, you the gospel but these women kept following Jesus they kept following Jesus. They followed him till death. 
when he died, they did not leave him. They didn't depart. They still followed him to his grave. Kai. Ah! What a passion. It means for all of those years of following Jesus, the woman had been, women had been wined out completely and wine in into Jesus. That they had no life outside him. Then the father of Zebedee himself must have tried because his wife left him at home and was following Jesus. Zebedee must have allowed the wife to follow. All his family left him. Am I lying to you? Then Zebedee must be a very gentle man. Or Zebedee wasn't alive. Either of the two. Have you ever thought of that? They came to him. The mother of Zebedee, Zebedee's children, with her sons, worshipping him, desiring a certain thing of him. So, we thank God for those men who submitted their family to our Lord Jesus Christ. They are in heaven right now. We give praise to God. No family that served Jesus will lose their reward. Are we blessed tonight? I, I, I don't have too much to say, but let me just marry what I'm saying in the spirit. Uh, you use spices on the dead. You pour ointment on the dead. Uh, Michael Goye, what kind of death does a priest possess in the Old Testament? Who have that? We just teach in Bible, small, small. <laughs> a priest, not a high priest. A priest. Okay, that is um, death to sins. Beautiful. What kind of death is that? That's a resurrection from the, the dead, dead kind of death. Or small death. Small death. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it has small death. So it's qualified for oil. So they anointed him. They anointed him. They anointed him. People would talk against ministers of the gospel. Don't know anything. Any minister that heaven calls. You know some people make themselves ministers. Because you have money. You can arrange ministry. That's not how ministry. You have to be called. And you don't push yourself into ministry. Even the fivefold ministry. The list of the anointing in the fivefold ministry the list of the anointing. I'm talking about the list of the anointing for fivefold ministry is still sacred. It's from it's from Christ. Open your Bible, Ephesians 4, verse 2. Talk where you help me read. One just keep reading. Yes. Verse 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Yes, sir. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Yes. There is one body. Yes, Lord. And one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Yes. One Lord, one, one faith, one baptism, one, baptism uh -huh. one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all 
and in you all. Now, one calling, one faith, one hope, one Lord. Now, you see, the realm of one is the realm of stature. That calling is, is calling unto stature. Person. But let's see something. But, but, there is another calling again. But unto every one of but, us. But, that tells us the different one. Every one of us is given what? Grace. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. There's a gift of Christ. Measure. Measure. Giving us the gift of Christ in a measure. Go further. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, yeah. he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Ah. Now that he ascended, Mm. What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Mm -hmm. And he gave some apostles. Now, he didn't give all apostles. These are the gifts of Christ. But all are not apostles. All are not prophets. It is some. Some, some, evangelists, some, pastors, some, teachers. Now, these are not all the gifts of Christ. But this, why will the Bible focus on this? Because this one are actually the earth, earth power gifts. These are the head power gifts. Teachers, come here, my son. Um, this is a let's say this is Christ. Let's say he's the head. From the neck down is his body. Then he gave gifts to the body. So let's see all how all the gifts are arranged. Pastor. The hands are these gifts. The hands are these gifts. There are other helps are the legs. The hands are these gifts. When God wants to stretch his hand, he stretch the fivefold ministry to touch the body. That hands can wash the leg. That hands can what, sir? wash the neck, touch the head, touch everywhere. It can reach anywhere. So it's an hand gift. Remember they prayed in the Acts of Apostle that thou mightest stretch your hand. That through the hands of the Apostle, anytime God is stretching his hand, he's using the fivefold ministry to reach the body. Now, help prayers. Money, songs, administration, some things are around the leg. Amen. They are the ones who carry the body. They have some anointing. Yes, sir. Wow. They have some anointing. But because these ones are higher, they are more anointed. Put your hands. These ones, though they are hands, they illuminate the body. The leg does not illuminate the body. It's not a gift of light. It's a gift of support. The legs does not build the body, but carries the body. And the hand needs the leg. Desperate. It needs them. Without them, we go nowhere. Great ministry of helps. 
But some people can start. God might start some people with leg. And as they grow, they grow into hand. But some people don't want to wait. Some people, they can't wait. You can be a giver of money. God can use you to be giving money. Just do good. Is it, if you are the one who minister, minister according to the proportion of don't stop. That ministering wasn't ministration of the word. Ministering substance. Prophecy. They are not hand. Prophecy is not a hand gift. Someone who is prophesying is actually the ministry of legs. It's an helps ministry. It's a supportive ministry. To be able to be a hand man, you have anointing to see the word. They call it Christ here. Yes, sir. The person teaches Christ. Amen. The word Christ means anointed one. It means the person divides the anointed one. Is called to touch the anointed stature. Amen. And I can tell you, Pastor, there are a whole lot of people that are called into this fivefold ministry and they are not touching Christ. Many of them are kind. They don't know him. Pastor, they don't know him. And they are pastors. But they want to solve problems. They don't know him. It means they've not grown. I will tell you something. I will tell you something. If you're unable to teach Christ, it means you've not really developed into his stature. Because without stature, you can teach Christ. Wow. So Jesus Christ himself, to be able to teach Christ, that's where the anointing is concentrated. When you're talking about the New Testament, oil of the New Testament starts with the priest. Yes, sir. It starts with the priest. For a man to decipher the priest is not easy. Jesus is both a priest and Jesus is an high priest. So his priesthood is his Christ. So faith message is a priestly message. Faith of the son. I'm not talking about faith in believing God for money. Other ministers can teach that. They, sir, amen. They are anointed. Can we say they are anointed? I'm not hearing you say it again. But they are not anointed with spices. That spices of Christ is not there. You see, anointing is a name. Anointing, God used the oil. I'm going somewhere. We're almost through. God used the oil to explain an art. So they called the oil mixture an art of the apothecary. A-R-T. Why art? An art is a sculpture, an art is a drawing, an art is an abstract. So it means the apothecary is doing something with compounds. So God is saying, when a, an oil is poured forth, a name is being spelled out. You're actually measuring a name. That's why I see the oil must of a particular measure. If you want to know the oil, a particular measure, the spices are measure. All of the spices are measure, and they are all measure into the oil.
when you say oil, not so, sir. Oil simply means spirit. Spices are natures. Spices are beans. Natures. You dissolve in oil. So to make the word an ointment is actually the character of the Holy Ghost and the two beings. If a person is a teacher of Christ, you can't wear the, what was it, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about apostle of healing. An apostle, you know a lot of people teach milk of the word of God. When they say, I hear a lot of people, they say they are apostles. They are not full apostles. I hope you are listening. Yes, sir. Now, they are apostles because they are sent. Yes. Not stature. In the New Testament order, what are they teaching? Can they teach Christ? Can they mention the kingdom? Can they dissolve the mysteries? Can they unearth dark sentences? Can they, can they teach things that are secret? And keep teaching it non-stop. When someone is standing off of an apostle, when he opens the word, fresh things open. In fact, I hope I'm talking to all of us. I hope you are not tired of me tonight. So some people say they are apostles. Truly, they might be. They might. Somebody can have a teaching and just, okay, God's okay. I want this teaching to go into the body. We will send you. We will send you. will send you. So some people can be sent one without the ingredients of the of he who send. Without the ingredient of the sender. Jesus can send you and you may not preach him. And you can teach something lower than him. So you are not his apostle you are an apostle of what he gave you to teach or to preach. But when you say you are his apostle, you are the rep, you are representing him. Sir. Nothing but him. Thank you, man. You say you're a prophet. Prophets and apostles are very similar. Somebody can have an apostolic calling. Let me just say, I'm not doubting you're an apostle. But apostle of what? Somebody can be can just exhort on the word and then send to the body. At times when people are sent into the body, not because they stand in the apostolic office, but they bear the hallelujah. They are not, they are not really apostles. They are not full apostles. But they are just sent. It's just a posting. I want to show you something. Someone like T. Hell Osborne, he saw Jesus. They are not, they are not apostle of Christ, but they are apostle of Jesus. All that they say is Jesus. I have listened to them, Jesus. Now, Reverend Wiley, okay, we call him an evangelist. 
let me, I am not too sure of something, but there is something on him. I perceive he stands in the office of a prophet. He's a prophet of Jesus. It's a prophet and an evangelist of Jesus. It's a prophet. At times you don't know prophets because many of them don't come and say uh -huh, all the time saying some things. The first time I listened to him in Zaria, 1983, he was, there was no miracles for the three days he came to teach. That was the time, that was the day, that was the season. That meeting was the meeting, and I perceive, was the meeting they used in inaugurating the Capro ministry. It was him they call to come and teach for three days. So he taught for three days. Every day I went for that program. Every day. It was not, he was talking nothing. He was just describing Jesus from the Gospels. So I'm wondering, what kind of power is this? I wonder, how are you able to talk of Jesus? Am I not reading the Bible? But you are not stopping. Where is this fountain coming from? He, and the, he, the way he was preaching, he was preaching so fast. Fluency. Talking at a terrific, terrific rate. Talking, talking nothing but Jesus. He didn't teach about needs. He didn't talk about prosperity. He didn't talk about healing. He didn't talk about power. He was just talking about that man. He described Jesus beyond the manger. He said many people would say, he said, little Jesus in my he said, he said, he said, he's not that Jesus again, no. He's actually, he's, where is that? He says, hi, Jesus, <laughs> who will not take nonsense. He described that man. He kept talking about the Lord Jesus. About the, now, it may not sound interesting to anybody. Sir, but I sense a New Testament spirit. Even as young as I was, I was 17 years old. I was wondering what manner of ministry was this? What kind of ministry? How will a man be talking Jesus? Other ministers don't. For three days, the same Jesus. I was, I was amazed. And at the, he didn't pray for healing. He never did any healing service. But that was a man with terrific miracles. <laughs> if you meet T.L. Osborne, he will tell you about Jesus. Can we go further? Kennedy Hagin is a unique prophet of Jesus. High Jesus' prophet. Very high. Who has a lot of Jesus spirit. A lot of people don't talk Jesus. You know something? When you hear them, they talk about power. And how they defeated witches. Seventeen witches came. And they eat them all. The ability to pray. All of those things. I feel that they are exhorters more. They are not apostles. It's good for people to stay in their ministry. And you know some people can talk with big, big words. And can draw your heart. You know there is a way. Some people can have... Mouth and utterance. And make you, before you know it, they can shift you from doctrine. And some people just, you don't see error around them. They are just okay. They are okay. There are people I can listen to, whether you like it or not. I listen to Joseph Prince today. I like him. I like Joseph Prince. He's not, 
not the grace message. It's his insight. Joseph Prince is a peculiar minister of the gospel that can travel very far. I won't talk more. I'm not here to judge men. I also listened to Higgin a little bit today. TJ, thank you. Sorry for... So, but you see, when we talk about Christos, the word Christ, the stone, it's not easy to break it. Is it that Christos, Christ, is the priest? Can we say it again? All of you must say it, every one of you. All of you must say that again. Christ is a priest. Is actually the priest in the holy place. Fullness of him takes charge of the holy place. It's not easy to teach him. When you touch the subject of the faith of the son, you are touching the, the subject of the power of God which is Christ. So you need anointing. So I like I say, oil rests on people, but in differentials. Not so? Uh, if you want to know who, what a minister is anointed with, check his message. The kind of ingredient mixture. What are they anointing with? I don't have my proof, but I perceive I'm not authenticating something. I'm not stamping it. I perceive that some things can just be oil in the spirit. It does not have adhesive. It does not have substance. It's just oil or an enablement. I hope I'm talking to you. I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. Pastor, they anointed the sick with oil. They didn't say anoint them with the anointing oil. So, oil can heal the sick. But an ointment is more than that. An ointment is more than that. An ointment, it's meant for the deciphering the priestly body. The man called Christ. I will read him. Let me just go further and lay foundation, then we'll close. I want us to go home quickly today, please. Don't worry, I'm eager to close, and I will. Now, there are certain things, oil will not come upon any man that is not built with Christ, especially the Christ kind of oil. Christ, let us understand our kind of oil. We, we, you don't, you can't be like some others. You don't have their kind. Amen. Now you don't expect Jesus to behave like Elijah. You, you say you don't know what manner of spirit you have. He told the sons of Zebedee. I won't call fire like Elijah the prophet. And he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. He's talking to them. 
So this spirit is not just only limited to spirit within, but upon. My operation, because it took the spirit upon to call fire down. Fire will not, that fire will not listen to your faith. It's the power. The same spirit that came on Elisha. It, it rested on Elisha. And Elisha divided Jordan and called the name of the spirit. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? He's talking to the spirit upon him. And that spirit open is that anointing. What did he do, sir? It's a spirit. The high priest, the priest, before they can be qualified for the ointment, for anointing, hallelujah, they must be dead. That's what I'm saying. They must be dead. You anoint dead men. You anoint dead men. To be a priest means you pass the outer court. You must die by the brazen altar. That's your first death. That's your first. So that death is the completion of the resurrection from the dead. Where you obey the laws of greater death. Are you listening to me? In the holy place. Am I communicating to you? Until you are conformed to, to Christ's image completely. Can we say amen? amen? Now, I am now relating. Where do we write names on? It's clear. Oil, bear names. Stones also bear names. You see, they write names on stones, especially on precious stones. You can write names on any stone. But the highest names are on glittering stone, shining stone, precious stone. I will give him a white stone and I will write to him a name which no man knoweth, and I will give him to eat of the hidden manna. Hmm. A white stone. And in the white stone, a name, which no man knoweth. Not so. He said, to him that were coming, will I give him to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone. So, you must have eat of the hidden manna to qualify for the white stone. So, the hidden manna and the white stone has a relationship. A white stone is a, is a new name, new name written. I love the word, the new name written, new name written, which no man knoweth, except he that is me. Is a, and I will give him a white stone, and in the white stone, white stone is a name written, and is a new name, which no man knoweth, but he that Receive it. So it's clear. The name is the name of the Eden manna you ate. It means the name is Eden, and the manna they gave to you is also Eden. Is Eden. I'm showing you that what you ate is a name. Now, that, listen to me. What you ate is a name. The food. Of the name in the stone is the hidden manner. That hidden manner is an hidden character for the authority of the name. Now, that name in the white stone is a name within, not name upon. God told, told Moses, make sure you obey that angel because my name is in him. It means that the angel has a white stone and a name was written in him.
for my name is in him. For my name is in him. So the Eden manner is the key to assessing the new name. He alone, manner means mystery. Eden manner, meaning the Eden manner will culture in him a character, an ability to actually find out how that name, what that name is, when you know the name, you will operate it. Without knowing the name, you can't operate it. So the Eden manner is a digestion of an ability for discovering the, what's that? the power of the new name. Because the power of the new name will make you will the new name written on your head. So you can see all works together. All works together. So name can be written on a stone. I've not finished. So if names are written on a stone, that new name is given to you. It's your name. It's your name as a stone. It's your name as a stone. That the new name upon you is your oil upon the stone. Pouring oil upon the stone. Like I said, you must be dead to have a name written upon me. When they say the poor, when they say the right on your forehead name is beyond just the resemblance in the physical attitude. That ointment, that oil is a name. Give me Hebrew chapter 1. Verse 8, thy throne, O God, is forever. The scepter of your kingdom is righteousness. O God, you love, O God, you love, O God, you love righteousness. A God should hate wickedness. A God should hate wickedness. How will a God hate wickedness? Very easy. How? Who can tell me? How can a God hate wickedness? Or how can an Elohim hate wickedness? You will not be a God if you don't hate what God hates. And you can't be a God if you don't love what God loves. So when they say the love of God, It's not to be a, it's not only it's not just only limited to being subservient to God. It's actually a calling into an inheritance. Amen. Behold, what manner of love bestowed upon you is giving you God's capacity. Amen. Why should I will a God and what makes a God to love? What makes a God to hate? Simply, my son, simply. It's judgment. A God judges. A God will evaluate, discern, evaluate, resolve, resolve, and he will call something, something to hate. It's only a God that can know what to hate. Because the God, a God does not hate at all. But when it comes to hate something, Nothing is wicked. A God must hate iniquity. So when God is saying, that's why, may Jesus help us and may nothing deprive us of judgment. If not, you won't have transition into whole God. So you can see that volume of the book is actually judgment. Marriage into judgment. Weaving of thinking 
discernment, pattern that God will, that is called God's love or the will of God to do thy will. Oh God, Satan. Because oh God is his will. Oh, God is his will. That will is him. That will is them. What you call will is what makes them up. What their nature are born and what their nature loves. If you are able to, when you have found the will of Elohim, you, you come into a place and into a high resolve which will make you high. That's how you attain. High priestly ministry. You become, you come into high judgment. Is you call him high, most high God. Priest of the most high God. You can, you must know what this most high hates. God would tell high priest, when your daddy dies, don't cry. Because you bear the, the garment, holy garment. You bear the oil. And don't even move near the dead because you are dead. Your death is different from their death. You don't behave like them. Hallelujah. That's an high priest. You don't behave like them. Hello, son. So ask me, what did I see? I just saw botany and geography today. God showed me botany. He's showing me the botanical and geography, how they marry. The plants need geography. <laughs> the plants stay on geography. The geology of it, the sand. Inside, why will the plant stay on geography? Because the plant witnesses to the land. There are things in the land and there is something in the plant. Oil comes from the plant. Spices come from the plant. Things are in the earth. What ought to be anointed with oil and spices are things that are dead. Stones. That tells us the plant also, this is here, this, this baffles me. The plant also is a maker of precious stones. Because that oil, if solidified, is a precious stone. There is a, there is a precious stone that plant produce. Who know it? Who can help me? You, you, you know it? There is a precious, particular precious stone. Amber. Thank you so much. He got it. <laughs> or bedelium. Bedelium is from a gum tree. Imagine, Pastor, a tree will secrete a gum and it will so solidify and become stony and is classified among stone. The botany behaves like the earth. That is why the best, that's why you can see, they use trees. Land is not a witness. Trees are witnesses. Plants are witnesses. It is a, in the spirit. You don't pour oil with spices. Now, spices are awesome. Not so, so. Spices. Most of the herbs of spices are very tiny things. Not so. They are not mighty trees. And some of the spices, look at me. Even though they say sweet calamus, go test it if it's going to be sweet. Cinnamon. 
I've never seen cinnamon very sweet. Taste it and see. So the, in smell, they are sweet. The fragments of aloe, cassia, and what again, sir? Man, out of ivory palaces. Have you seen Maya? It's actually a solid substance. All of these things, frankincense, they are all bitter. And they are from where? They are from the ground. Now you can see man, spices are a symbol of nature. Oil is a symbol of spirit. Oil alone does not represent name. Oil move names. Names are those botanical plants that are spices. Is it those fragrance? Those spices are names. They are names. I say cassia is a name in the spirit. Alo is a name in the spirit. Calamos is a name in the spirit. Ma is a name, even though it's bitter, is a name. Ma, 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 bitter, bitter. All of these are bitter herbs. They are healers. They are healers. They kill death. They solve death problem completely. They are actually planned of the perfect will of God. They are healers. Son, are you ready? When, you know, the, the leaves of the tree of life, they are leaning for the nation. So it te that tells her that leaves will be very bitter. What that tree, what that leaves will heal, it will solve the problem of iniquity. Pastor, healing is actually forgiveness or remission. It's actually the ministry of reconciliation. So the leaves of the tree of life is the ministry of reconciliation, is the mediation. That's the tool of mediating, are you getting me, sons into eternal life. It's actually the ministry of everlasting life. I hope I'm talking to you. But do you know something? That's when the tree, when the leaves is used directly, it will take an high priest to administer it. He who bears the oil that has all these contingents. There's something I want to say finally. These spices makes glad. Makes glad. Can we say that after me? They make the city of God glad. Give me finally, finally. I want to close here. Please go and listen to this message. Thy throne, O God, is forever. Yes, this is Psalm 45. They pick Hebrew from 45. And ever the scepter of your kingdom is righteousness. Now thou lovest righteousness, it is wickedness or iniquity. Therefore God, thy God, anointed thee with the oil of gladness. Oil of gladness. Meaning oil of gladness. 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 Say it again. Oil of gladness above thy fellows. Above thy fellows. Pastor Thompson, everlasting life is the lower grade of gladness. Everlasting life. What makes it is oil. So it's not the oil. It's the glad. There is something in the oil. Above thy fellow. Then the next verse, all thy garments smell. Smell. Not of oil, of myrrh, aloes, cassia, out of ivory palaces. 
whereby they have made thee glad. So these are the things that makes glad. Now, but you will meet these same things because these are the mind, these are the substances you will find also in everlasting gospel. It is administered directly. Are you listening? The leaves are edible. They are a leaf. Meaning they are a testament. They are a parchment. They are a food. But here is anointing. So by the reason of the oil, it raises the status quo of the ingredients into eternal life. Eternal anointing. Eternal grace. Eternal ingredients. If they can make glad. If Jesus in his resurrected state is still being made glad by the substances. It means those things can also serve as eternal life. Are you ready for me? Yes, sir. Pastor, you and I, we're not using this oil. This is, we are, what are we using? It's called oil of joy. Because we are mourning we are one of we are one of the mourners in Zion that we are being comforted. We are being comforted. We've not been anointed with the oil of gladness. <laughs> but we have the oil of joy for money, garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's why they, we are limited to being called trees of righteousness, planting of the Lord. We are in the most holy but not yet rewarded until we overcome. Then they will anoint you with a new name. They will anoint us with a new name. Tonight, God is making known hidden mystery. You know, I said new name. What is the meaning of new name? What is the new name? The new name is not the everlasting name. Not so, Pastor. The new name is actually the name of eternal life. My new name. Now, the new name is not the name of the Father. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. That's, that's not the new name. That's not the name. It's, a, it's his everlasting name. You must have know the name of the Father to know the name, the name of thy God. New name. Kai! How gracious is the Lamb. How gracious is the Lamb on the throne. How great is his name, even his new name. How great is the God of gods. How great is Elohim. Indeed, O Lamb of God, your father is great. The God of glory who shrouded himself in mystery. Mighty is your name, O oh God. Even God, our God, whose dominion is from everlasting to everlasting to life eternal. Yea, whose dominion has no end. The God of glory 
who visited creation from the beginning. Almighty is your name. The God of God. Indeed, your name is great and greatly to be praised. You have done great things. You have raised the Lamb of glory. Even for us is our propitiation and his blood for the propitiation of the whole world. Yea, that great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Even Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We is even at your right hand. How greatly is he praised and how greatly is he raised. Greatly raised, yea, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I praise your name. Thank you for the things you have shared, the things you have said, the things you have empowered us to hear, the things you have opened. They are great and mighty. You have caused us to see your wondrous work out of thy law. Great and mighty things which we never knew. How great is your name. How great is your name. Hahila Amana. You remember the Sandite stone? The Jasper. Not so, sir. A spirit. You see the spirit upon him. The oil upon him. The nature upon him. You know what I'm seeing, son? I'm just seeing two things. I'm seeing the stone and the tree. Don't you see the whole leaf? Trees overshadowing the mess seat in the temple of Solomon. Only trees is what, son? Is olive oil. Olive trees simply signify oil of olive. Olive oil is the most holy. Oil is for witness. Olive trees. I hear the Lord said to my spirit, as many have seen these, I've seen secret. As many have had these, I've had secret. You have not only had, but your eyes have behold. You are beholding me. You are beholding my skirt being open. You are beholding my person being open to you. See, the Lord, you may not, it may not concretize now to you, but you see, I will unveil the mystery behind it. But your eyes have caught covenant with the Holy One of Israel. Thou remainest not the same again. Thou remainest not the same again. You are not as usual as you used to be before. Your eyes have seen. Your ears have heard. And you have behold. No one among you will hear what has been said today and will remain the same. I will hold you accountable. I will hold you accountable. You can hear this and withdraw. I will hold you accountable because I have been extra before you. You are cutting through me. You are cutting through me. You are causing me to open myself to you. You are cutting through me. You are tearing my veils. You are lifting the veils upon me. I am being seen, and you still see me yet clearly, for I am many. I am many, and your comprehension will grow as you go. Just attend to me gently. As you take heed, I will shine more, and you will remain no more the same, for you are changing from glory to glory, from strength to strength. Thank you. Happy is the man. Whose God is the Lord. Happy is that saint. 
who, has, who, who have heard the joyful sound. Yea, you are hearing the joyful sound. You are hearing the sound of joy. The sound of joy in the tabernacle of the saint. You're hearing the sound of strength. You're hearing the strength, even strength unto eternity. You're hearing the strength, sound of strength that will keep you eternally. Yea, you are being kept by the things you are hearing. You are being kept even by my power. Hear the Lord. This is the feast of my, of the power of an endless life. This is the feast of eternal power. Yea, this is the feast. This feast is a feast of fat things. Fat things. Full of, of wine. Yea, on the lees. Fat things of wine, well refined. Fat, fat things full of marrow. Yea, yea, fat things. Fat things. Fat things. Full of marrow, fat things. I am destroying the covering cherub. He can no longer cover. He can no longer cast shade. I am dissolving the membrane of the cherub. I am dissolving the covering of the fallen cherub. Edita na anie kare isalata na ina etamruni erna ina ida gale datuneti. Undercover, 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 under his covering. I am destroying what he has covered. I am destroying him. I am lifting up the covering, even by judgment, even by sight, even by comprehension. I am destroying him. I am destroying him. I am destroying him. Once again, yea, death is being swallowed up in victory, in minds, in comprehension. Yea, minds are growing, hearts are developing. Yea, I am making a feast of liberation. Feast indeed of emancipation. Feast of perfect freedom. I am making freedom. I am blessing. Yea, blessing indeed. For before you is placed a mirror of eternal power. Yea, even the mirror of glory. Yea, you are changing. Changing. Here in Ahata, image is appearing. Image is appearing. More images are coming. Image is appearing. Image is appearing. Image is appearing. I see rest. 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 Not too far. Rest. Not too far. Rest is not far fetched. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you. Shalom, everyone. Sorry for keeping you late till now.